Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast and in today's forecast we'll be talking about a new storm that's about to impact the United States that will bring a few tornadoes both tomorrow and Friday across parts of the southern plains and as well as the southeast along the Gulf Coast into the Dixie Alley and this storm is going to ramp up very quickly over the next 24 hours. I'll be giving you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast and let's begin with what's happening across the United States today that will lead into that tornado risk and right now it's actually really quiet across the United States we don't really have a whole lot of activity ongoing we had a cold front roll through Florida yesterday and there's a little bit of moisture down there in South Florida otherwise very sunny conditions the mid-Atlantic region same story pretty dry there we're not really looking at any precipitation very sunny overall today back over to the northeast a bit of an exception the lake effect snow is finally winding down in parts of western New York and even northwest Pennsylvania Many areas saw upwards of two to three feet of snow along the Great Lakes, while like areas like Buffalo only saw a couple inches at best. So really different story across the board. We saw upwards of three feet of snow, though, near Watertown, New York, just south of there. Back through the Midwest, it's also drying out there. Great Plains, there is some cloud activity beginning to arrive. And what we are watching for is actually a low pressure system that is just off the coast of California. You might be wondering, where is it? Well, you can actually barely see it. There's a little twirl there just off the coast there of San Francisco right here. It's very, very small, but it's noticeable. This is actually going to move through Southern California into Arizona through New Mexico over the next 24 hours, believe it or not. And then it'll be in the Southern Plains and that'll bring the tornado risk across parts of the Southeast and as well as the Southern Plains going into both tossing trampolines on tall trees Thursday and as well as flying fences Friday. All right. One thing I do want to point out, we've showed you this at every single forecast literally since Sunday. This is the snow cover that we currently have here across the central plains. There is still snow on the ground across much of the Midwest, but this is your snow right here. Any of that stationary white stuff that you're seeing here on the satellite imagery, that's actually the reflection of the snow, which is actually pretty cool to see. Oklahoma has all melted away with all their snow at this point. There's only some clouds passing right now, but yeah, very interesting stuff here. Again, we've been looking at this the last several forecasts, and you can kind of see the progression over time. It's very interesting to just kind of look at with the, how it's been melting over the last several days. Here are the watches and warnings across the country. Really nothing surprising here. The only thing that's been surprising is the freeze warning in effect for parts of Florida and southern Georgia, southeast Alabama. That was mainly for this morning. Uh, we do have some winter weather advisories in effect and even some winter storm watches in New Mexico. Otherwise, no watches and warnings right now. That will probably change tomorrow with that tornado risk that's expected across parts of Texas and Louisiana and a few other states. And again, we'll talk about that here in just a second. But one thing I do want to point out is the jet stream. Let's kind of talk about the weather pattern that's going to be impacting the United States over the next several days. Give you an idea of where the storm's actually originating from, which I kind of showed you here at the top that we do have this low pressure system that's coming out of the Pacific Ocean, moving through California. And what we're going to be looking at is a little trough right here. This is by around Thursday, around six o'clock. Here's your low pressure system in the upper levels. We have a jet stream that will not be super amplified, but it's strong enough to produce some shear in the atmosphere for there to be a few tornadoes. One thing that's pretty critical with this as well is that it's a negatively tilted trough and usually when we have negatively tilted troughs these do bring a bit more of a severe weather component to them which is the reason why this particular setup for tomorrow for severe weather is not really surprising due to the ingredients that we have and as well as it being a negatively tilted trough those pull a lot more moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico and as well as bring a bit more instability along with them just better ingredients overall this going to Friday that low pressure system will race off to the north and northeast through parts of the Ohio Valley where rain is expected by Saturday into Sunday. Jet stream remains very strong across much of the United States. We will have a bit of a cool down out of this for those, especially up in the Northern Plains and the Midwest. That is where we're going to have a bit more of that polar jet stream dipping down to the South here. And eventually as we go into next week, things do become a bit more uncertain, but I think we'll stay active on the East Coast for most of next week. Meanwhile, other areas back over on the West Coast will be a, le a little bit less active overall. Now let's talk more about that severe weather potential for tomorrow and actually the Storm Prediction Center just updated this as I was recording, we do have an enhanced risk of severe weather that is including parts of just north of Houston. So this is really for Southeast Texas. A couple of changes here. This enhanced risk has shifted to the east in the latest outlook. Uh, one of the biggest things though is that we're looking at a tornado risk primarily for tomorrow. The damaging wind and hail threat are actually quite low. A couple things I want to point out though, Houston is currently in that slight risk. I wouldn't be surprised if they do go under an enhanced risk for tornadoes tomorrow. And then areas like Galveston also 
also in the same boat of a slight risk Lake Charles in southwest Louisiana and that slight risk that enhanced risk does include the Woodlands Lufkin as well as back through Jasper College Station in the slight risk marginal threat goes all the way back up into North Texas and southeast Oklahoma however this area is mainly going to be for strong storms I'm not looking at much severe weather in this area I think more than anything some small hail and gusty winds might occur maybe an isolated supercell or two but tornadoes are very unlikely in that region and believe it or not this is again a tornado driven enhanced risk meaning that we do have a 10 percent probability within a 25 mile radius of tornadoes in this yellow shaded region tornado risk really gets cut off as we go closer to waco texas and near tyler so just keep that in mind again not really really concerned about tornadoes in north texas or oklahoma but definitely i have a tornado action plan in place for tomorrow in southeast texas and southwest louisiana i do have a plan to go live depending on the timing of this it's pretty likely i'll be live so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon so you're notified if and when i do go live now let's talk more about the severe weather timing for tomorrow and the timestamp is at the top left of your screen notice this is 4 a.m tomorrow so we're gonna be looking at a lot of showers maybe a couple of isolated rumbles of thunder in the early morning once we get closer to sunrise we'll have some storms ongoing just south of houston i don't anticipate any severe weather this early in the morning but once we get closer to about eight to nine o'clock that's when things might get a little bit more dicey we're at least looking at some showers and storms going through houston back over to the north a lot of rainfall overall across oklahoma as well as parts of north texas into louisiana and as well as arkansas this is by around 10 o'clock so again nothing really concerning by this point i think overall most of the severe weather will be during either the very late morning or into the afternoon hours here across southeast texas this is by 12 o'clock so this is when things get a little bit more dicey we'll be looking at some storms here especially near the houston metro area that could be rotating by this point and we'll have that chance to produce a tornado risk and again make sure you have multiple ways to receive alerts for this event i do plan on being live once we go closer to one to two o'clock in the afternoon these storms are moving off to the north and east notice some of these storms even have like a little hook on the future radar those would be the ones that we'd have to watch for for a possibility for a tornado or two and again a few trails will be possible throughout this entire event once we get closer to four to five o'clock in the afternoon most of the storms are moving off to the north and east and as we go into the evening hours around eight to nine o'clock tomorrow evening we might still have some rotation in these storms that are here but i think most of this threat will be during the late morning into the early to mid-afternoon hours another critical thing with this is that it is a bit more of a conditional risk meaning that this might or might not happen so obviously worst case scenario we see a few tornadoes and for the best case scenario we don't see any tornadoes so again there's a chance for either one to happen it's going to depend on multiple factors tomorrow especially with how much rain we're going to see during the morning so just keep that in mind this could be a bit more of a lower level sort of severe weather event where the cloud tops are not going to be extremely high tomorrow so that's also another thing to kind of keep in mind here all right let's talk more about the severe weather potential as we head into friday as of right now on flying fences friday we do have a marginal threat of severe weather overall not too concerned about this i wouldn't be surprised if a slight risk gets added somewhere just for that tornado risk again i'm not really expecting a strong tornadoes either day it would be a low risk overall uh, but this is what we're looking at at least going into friday marginal threat from birmingham alabama back into louisiana mississippi and parts of florida are included in this risk now here's a little quick look at the timing for tomorrow and my next forecast i'll show you more specifics on this this is going again into the overnight hours on thursday night into friday morning and what we're really gonna be looking at is more of a linear line of storms during the overnight hours showers and storms kind of flirting with the gulf coast this will be the area to watch for i think mainly we'll be looking at damaging winds but we might see a few tornadoes across the gulf coast so just keep that in mind definitely a water spout risk offshore and then once we go into the late morning hours and as well as into the early afternoon hours on friday we'll be watching for storms rolling across new orleans back through meridian and tuscaloosa and a better chance for a little bit of some shower and storm activity will exist during the afternoon hours across parts of alabama thank you so much for watching make sure to like button down below and subscribe if you've not already